I'm Scott English. I'm the executive director of the APS and the proud administrator of the American Philatelic Research Library. Uh, we're here today to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the founding of the library. The, the, the goals that we set out when we created the library, I think, have been far exceeded. Uh, our goal was to create a library where we could make a home for philatelic research and give it a place for the APS members and the APRL members to come and do research, learn more about it, and share that with the world. And I think what you see today, where you're standing, is much more than that. And we're not done. I was very excited that two years ago, about this time, we did an opening for the, the, this library space. And what I said then, I mean now. And that is, the building is great, but the contents inside of it mean more than that. And our goal over the, last, over the last two years is to help get us financially stable so that we could focus on growing out our capacity as a library. And so we've been talking with the Strategic Planning Committee as well as with the boards of the APS and the APRL. And I have great faith that over the next five years, we're going to do some great things with the library. And I appreciate the support of the people here and our members abroad. This year has been an interesting year for us. We've, we've changed leadership. That's probably not happened ever in the APS and the APRL history. Uh, but both of our presidents uh, were brought to us this year by happenstance. And so they deserve a lot of credit for the fact that uh, they never set out to be the president of the, the board that they're on. And yet, here they are. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Bob Ziegler, who took over as president just this summer. Bob's going to share a little bit about the, the, the background of the APS founding of the library. We also have Ken Grant. <laughs> Ken's going to talk about Dan Voos, who, Voos, who really is the heart and soul of this library even today. Uh, we're, we're pleased to have Congressman G.T. Thompson from the 5th District of Pennsylvania. And Representative Kerry Benninghoff, who proudly represents the 171st District, which includes Belfont, in the Pennsylvania State House. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Bob Ziegler, who can speak for himself. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Scott. It's, uh, I'm the president of the American Philatelic Society, uh, perhaps an accidental president at the moment. but. Uh, we are very, very pleased to see this 50th anniversary for the APRL. This library, which we celebrate today, is the culmination of the vision of many of our forebears. It has grown from a mere dream to the foremost research facility for philately in the United States. It benefits researchers from our entire great country. One of the first people to have that dream was Edward Willard, also known as Ned. Ned Willard was a former president of the American Philatelic Society. He envisioned a first class research facility as a central key to the success of that society. In the late 1960s, Ned Willard led the search for and the purchase of a building site in State College, which resulted in the American Philatelic Building, including the American Philatelic Research Library. He also was instrumental in getting Dan Vuys to lead the uh, effort to promote and further the interest of the library. While Mr. Willard passed away in 1973, he would no doubt be astonished and gratified to see the full realization of his dream, which stands all around you. Thanks to Ned Willard and so many others who came after him, Philately and the world at large are vastly enriched by this living, world-class monument to knowledge, research, and education devoted to stamps and postal history. Thank you. To hear more about Dan Vuys, I'm going to introduce Ken Grant. Ken, thank you very much for being here today, and thank you for your leadership for the APRL. Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. I'm the accidental APRL president. Um, Daniel Vuiz and Edward Willard were the members of the APS family who took up the idea of a society library and made it happen. It's my turn to tell you a little about Dan Vuiz and why he's remembered today. He died 40 years ago in 1978 on the day he was to receive his second Luff Award. You might ask why he was being recognized with a second Luff. Um, I don't know with complete certainty, but I suspect these accomplishments factored into the decision. He had served as APS president and treasurer. He was Ed Willard's choice to lead the Ad Hoc Library Feasibility Committee. In addition to being an APRL founder, in the early years of the library, he held the positions of APRL treasurer, vice president, and president. He died while serving as president. His death, something I fervently pray never happens again to another sitting president. <laughs> if that were not enough, he edited the Philatelic Literature Review, brought a copy, um, for 21 years, which is now the house organ of the APRL, and was an outspoken advocate for the importance of philatelic literature in our hobby. None other than George Lind, nicknamed Dan Mr. Philatelic Literature. So, decades of service on the APS and APRL boards, along with decades of philatelic writing and editorial work promoting philatelic literature, could he have done any more? Well, when our library was established in 1968, most of the collection was donated by Dan Vuiz, three tons worth. One of his goals was to increase cooperation between philatelic libraries. How impressed would he be today by, by our philatelic union catalog? Dan Vuiz was a man who loved this society and this library. He manifested that love through service, philatelic research, and philanthropy. I'm thrilled that the society and its library are recognizing his efforts. Thank you. Before I let GT come up and speak, I want to embarrass him for a minute. When I first came to Belfont, I was uh, invited to go over and visit with GT, and we sat down and had a very nice conversation in his office down the street in Belfont. And uh, I, I got to tell him a little bit about my political past, and uh, he felt sorry for me, I think, and decided that uh, if there was ever anything I needed, then I could just call on him. And uh, I tested him on that in 2015 or 2016, when the inverted Jenny appeared in New York, I called GT's office, talked to his chief of staff, and the next thing you know, I get a phone call from the FBI out of New York that says, I don't know who you are, but I'm supposed to call you. So uh, that, the result of that quick effort and that action on GT's part and, and the work of the FBI and the U.S. Attorney General, we were able to get that stamp back, and what the FBI agent said was record time. Uh, we, returned, we recovered it in five weeks, and of course we got to do a great press conference in New York City in front of the Inverted Jenny, and then last year we sold that thing for $250,000, and it has helped substantially in eliminating the debt here at the APRL. So GT, we really do owe you a debt of gratitude, and thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Rep proudly representing the 5th District of Pennsylvania for now. Uh, we're changing districts. <laughs> GT Thompson. Thank you very much. Scott, here's the good news. We're going to go from Pennsylvania 5 to Pennsylvania 15. We're still going to be represent the society here in, uh, in Belfont. Uh, good morning, everyone. What a privilege and honor to be here, uh, uh, to be back. First of all, I want to say thank you to, uh, to the Philatelic Society for uh, having this wonderful, amazing resource, uh, the, your operation here in the town that I was born in, uh, Belfont, Pennsylvania, um, and uh, proud to... Uh, uh, and you know it's been it's been 50 years uh, that we're celebrating this library. I was here when we dedicated this one, but 50 years, all of it in Center County, Pennsylvania. I think that's pretty incredible, given the, just the remarkable and amazing mission of this society um, that that you would locate that here. We're so proud to uh, to have the operation here, and certainly this library, this wonderful resource here. 
And, um, and I understand there's one more, um, what was it, the inverted, uh, inverted, Jenny. inverted Jenny out there yet. So I look at every stamp that comes on my <laughs> envelopes. That's what I learned about that last one. I don't want to miss that if somebody happens to, to lick that thing and put it on an envelope <laughs> and send it, send it my direction. I'm paying attention really close. Uh, but, um, uh, but I am really, really proud to be here on, on a day where we celebrate the golden anniversary of this amazing library, which is the source of so much uh, knowledge and history of our country, actually, when you look at, uh, at, uh, at stamps and, uh, and how stamps really have been used to document our history and celebrate our history, our, our geography, uh, uh, historical events, historical figures. Um, it just, um, it's pretty incredible that it's right here. And it's pretty incredible it's been 50 years. And so I, uh, I have uh, a, um, uh, I want to read something that will be placed in the uh, congressional record when uh, we get back to Washington here, um, when this election's finally over, thankfully. Uh, everybody gets their TV sets back uh, from all the commercials. Um, but we'll be back there uh, a week from uh, this coming Tuesday. And so, uh, and, and so while, when I'm back, I'm going to take to the House floor and offer these remarks. So I want to share a little preview with you of, of these remarks that will be entered into the congressional record uh, for, for all time. And um, uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise today to congratulate the American Philatelic Research Library on its golden anniversary. The American Philatelic Research Library in Belfont, Pennsylvania has provided research and resources for the American Philatelic Society for 50 years. The American Philatelic Research Library has one of the world's largest and most accessible collections of philatelic literature. In nearly three miles of shelving contain more than 23,000 book titles and 5,700 journal titles. The library's digital collections include digital versions of resources the American Philatelic Research Library collection, as well as born digital resources it has permission to share and contributed content from other sources. The American Philatelic Research Library has provi also provides traditional library resources. The American Philatelic Society is the largest nonprofit organization for stamp collectors in the world. Founded in 1886, the APS serves collectors, educators, postal historians, and the general public by providing a wide variety of programs and services. I wholeheartedly congratulate the American Philatelic Research Library on half a century of being the premier source for philatelic literature and resources to collectors around the world. And thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back. So thank you for the honor and the privilege to be here today on this, this celebration of 50 years. You know, even though we're an international organization, our home is Belfont, and I can't think of someone who does a better job of representing Belfont than Carrie Benninghoff. When I first came to, to Belfont, Carrie has, has been very welcoming to me and uh, continues to be so. He represents proudly the, uh, this area of Center County in the State House in, in Harrisburg, our state capital, and he's as committed to the community as anyone I've ever seen, and I can't thank him enough for being here today and all that he's done for, for the people of Belfont and for Center County. Ladies and gentlemen, Carrie Benninghoff. Good morning. Appreciate the invitation and those kind remarks. I come here not only as a legislator to provide a formal citation, but as many of you probably don't know, I'm a old, former stamp collector myself and a coin collector. And I remember as a young boy just looking at the beauty, the artwork on those stamps. I have a, uh, I had a adopted grandfather who's probably actually a, a great uncle, but Andy DeBrav in New York. And every once in a while I'd get these large scroll lettering on an envelope sent to me and I always knew they were stamps from Uncle Andy or Pap Andy as we would call him in those days. And I was thinking this morning coming to this event as I struggle with another holiday season of what do you get your children, what do you get your grandchildren, of what a cool thing to start doing to give my five-year-old grandson stamps, start his own collection. So I had to go dig through the dust of my closet to find my own collection back out. But as GT said, you know, this is really about recording history. Now, some of you know I served as a Center County Coroner here, and we were up meeting a little earlier. I was watching, looking at one of the paintings up there, and there's a print up there of a mailman who landed in the snow on some mountainous 
area and he takes the bag out because we know that those mail carriers saw this as their responsibility to get that stuff delivered no matter how they had to do it. Well, as former coroner, I have seen small planes that have gone down generally at 3 o'clock in the morning, generally when it snows, and generally it's very, very cold. And I mention that because, for the most part, we take for granted the service that those individuals gave us. In this whole electronic age where we communicate so easily, and we've almost lost the art of writing letters and sending cards, uh, I, I worry that we lose part of that history. So this library, to me, is about preserving that. Some of you probably haven't thought about all the DNA that's on all those stamps. All the people of the past, we still have some of their DNA. I had this terrible, crazy idea in my thought. I said, well, look what they did in Jurassic Park. We probably don't want to bring some of those people back. <laughs> <clears throat> but as I close, I just want to say it's really an honor to be here to celebrate this. It's really a tremendous part of our community as we continue to try to bring Belfont back a little bit, bring a new hotel in there, and celebrate its history. It's not just about Belfont, but this great country, this great state. But to me, the documents of what we see in a stamp, and as I looked back at my own childhood, one of the things I loved about the coins, especially when I could read the dates in those days, is thinking about who all touched these stamps or touched these coins. Some of you handled the same coins maybe Abraham Lincoln touched. Who knows? But you have put together a museum forever for future generations that one day my grandson will get older and realize that Papat wasn't just a nut sending this stuff in the mail, but I was trying to help perpetuate history. The beauty of history is studying it and learning from it. But the artwork on those stamps are just phenomenal. And now I know what I'll be doing tonight, digging that collection out and looking over it, because it also brings back to me Papat to Bravo. Without further ado, I would like to present the citation. Much like the congressmen, we look at these more than just ceremonially. Uh, these are a document of your service and the great commitment you've made, and I selfishly am very glad you've come to Belfont, and I think uh, I'll be here at the next 50th anniversary, I hope, to celebrate your 100th anniversary. Scott, I don't know if you want us to inform me to present this to you, but I will. It says, whereas the House Representative of Pennsylvania takes great pleasure in recognizing those organizations which contribute to the benefit of the communities and ultimately all citizens of this Commonwealth. Whereas the American Philatelic Research Library is celebrating the momentous occasion of the 50th anniversary during this event held here November 2nd and 3rd, 2018. Whereas APRL is the research arm of the Philatelic Society, which is lauded for the nation's largest and the world's oldest nonprofit organization for the promoting stamp collecting and postal history for collectors, researchers, and even simple general public people like myself. Located in Belfont, APRL, is the largest philatelic library in the world with more than 85,000 items. Throughout its history, it has made measurable contributions to the welfare of our society through a sense of fellowship and through its programs, which are designed to enhance the quality of life for all, and I would add, and for future generations. A succession of dedicated leaders and staff has made this possible, keeping ever mindful the noble maximums of this organization. Now, therefore, the House of Representatives of Commonwealth of Pennsylvania salutes the American Philatelic Society and Library upon its richly deserved recognition, and we offer best wishes for continued growth in the success in the years to come. This has been signed by myself, the Speaker of the House, Mike Terzai, and on behalf of the entire General Assembly and the Governor of this great Commonwealth, I want to thank you for your work, your dedication, your donations, and most of all, preserving our history. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for having me. I did want to make one correction to you, uh -oh. your speech, Carrie. There's no such thing as a former stamp collector. There's somebody not collecting right now. And so hopefully, as he's pulling out that stamp out in the night, he gets a little emotional about it, and he starts wondering, what can I add to it? We'll be open on Monday morning. I want to see you back here. You and hopefully we'll have him as a member as well. <laughs>